Is there power in prayer? One of the best preachers of all time was Charles Spurgeon, the great British preacher. And pastors would come from all over to learn from him because he was so dynamic and his church so powerful. And so you would think that when they came to discover what made his church so great that he would say, hey, let me introduce you to my leaders or maybe you can see my office and my commentaries. But it's famous that Charles Spurgeon would want to take his visitors to his Monday night prayer meeting that operated in the basement of his church where intercessors were on their knees. And he would say to his visitors, this is the powerhouse of the church. This is the engine room. This is what makes the church go. So there's a whole lot of other great things. This isn't the only thing, but this is the primary thing. This is the piece that helps all the other things work. And I think in your own life, if you think of, wow, I need the power of God for everything else to work. So in the place of prayer, we wait on God. And that's what Jesus said when he told his disciples in Acts chapter one, verse eight, he says, you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. But those disciples that became the apostles and church planners and preachers and operating in miracles, they needed the power of God in the first century like you and I need the power of God in the 21st century. The church of Jesus Christ continues to expand and it's the power of God that enables us to operate in a supernatural way so that it's far beyond just human strength. It's far beyond just what you and I can accomplish. It's God at work. It's supernatural activity taking place inside of us that helps us be witnesses in our world. It's the people of God need the power of God in order to accomplish the purposes of God right here, right now. So when you come to God in prayer, much like the apostles, you're waiting on the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will fill you with power so that you can actually accomplish more of the purpose that God has on your life. (laughs) When I was uh, about 12 years old, our family made a big lawnmower transition. (laughs) Hear me out. I'd grown up pushing a mower that had no power. It was just one of those $29.95 mowers that you got at Sears. And I would work diligently laboring in the yard with very little effectiveness. But when we made the transition to a power mower, suddenly everything changed. I could do more, it was faster, and I enjoyed it (laughs) because it was working. That's kind of a little picture of what it's like when you go from walking in your own strength to having more of the power of God inside of you. The Holy Spirit at work so that it's not your strength. It's not what you can do on your own. It's not just the skills that you have. It's God at work through you in a supernatural way to expand the work of God through your life in his world. And that is is enjoyable and that comes when you wait on God in prayer and just like we read about in the book of Acts we can operate in power and it's in the place of prayer waiting on God inviting the Holy Spirit to fill you entirely that we grow in the power of God so that we don't have to walk in our own strength but we today can walk in supernatural power